The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Romans 8.28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Romans 1.18 For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of people who suppress the truth by their unrighteousness. Verse 19 because what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. Verse 20, For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, because they are understood through what has been made. So people are without excuse. John sixteen thirty-three. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. 1 Corinthians 2.16 For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Philippians 2.5 let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Isaiah 55, 8-9 For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. 2 Corinthians 6, 2 Behold, now is the acceptable time. Look, now is the day of salvation. Before we start our Bible study today, as usual, we have to cleanse ourselves from all sins that we have committed today. Let us examine our, ourselves and... Uh, See to it that we uh, name and acknowledge and admit all those sins that we have committed before God the Father. <clears throat> because 1 John 1, 9 assures that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, for you, believer, rebound. Name your sins. But for you, unbeliever, it is using your free will. So you can make the most important decision, the decision to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. Therefore, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful to you for the privilege of having the freedom to assemble ourselves together once again in this Bible study through the YouTube so we can focus our attention upon your word which is forever a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you that you have preserved your word in writing for it both in the original languages as well as in translation. You have provided the activated human spirit for faith perception of doctrine. You have provided God the Holy Spirit 
who is the ultimate teacher and the gift of pastor teacher for communication of doctrine so that every believer can consume the oxygen of the spiritual life, your word, and growth from infancy to adolescence and from adolescence on to maturity and fulfill the purpose for which you have left every believer in this life. And we know, Father, the greater knowledge of doctrine, the greater the growth, the greater the blessing, the greater impact, the greater production of divine good, the greater the reward in the eternal state. And there is every benefit and no detriment to growing in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so, as we approach the study of your word, we ask that you open our hearts to the truth, that we may fulfill that divine mandate of spiritual growth. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, welcome once again to our Bible study today. And we are still on the uh, topic, the Christian way of life. Okay, we will continue where we stopped yesterday. We have already uh, said that uh, uh, I ask you, do you still remember what God had forbidden the first man and woman in uh, the Garden of Eden? Now, <clears throat> Okay, God f did forbid them to eat the fruits, not apples. Hmm? The Bible does not say apples, only fruits of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, that's what God did forbid them. In other words, before Adam and the woman disobeyed God by eating the fruits of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they never had any knowledge whatsoever about good and evil. Do you know why? Because everything they knew about was only the good. Can you see that? That is where our own sin nature originated. Okay? After they knew what is good and evil. And that is what makes children do even when they are still small. That's why we would ask, where did we learn how to do those um, things, awful deeds, personal sins? Where? It all started when Adam and the woman learned what was good and evil. Knowledge of good and evil, okay? Now, on the other side, where does the Holy Spirit learn these things? These productions like joy, peace, love, long-suffering, etc. Where? Now let's find out. Where do these productions come from or what is its origin? Okay? Now, here is a very good example. Supposing Pepsi-Cola launches some kind of a lottery wherein they give out cash prizes by millions of dollars to lucky crown holders. And suppose you happen to be the lucky winner bearing the lucky number of a crown which holds a million dollar prize. The moment you find out that you got the lucky number bearing a million dollar prize, do you know what's going to happen to you? <laughs> you won't be able to remember Pepsi-Cola, the sponsor of the lottery, anymore. Because all you can remember, all you are thinking is your winning number, correct? You won't be able to remember Pepsi or, Pepsi or Coca-Cola or what have you. Because all that is in your mind is your winning number and the $1 million prize you just won. Am I right? 
Now, if someone asks you, what soda company was it? Maybe that's the only time you remember it to be the Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola or Sprite or what. And that is the principle that happens with God. That when there is some kind of prosperity in our life, we have the tendency to forget the source of that prosperity, right? Always the same principle. This source is always God, you see. If you are asked, where did your prosperity come from? Answer, from God, you see. Now, here, let's concentrate well. Let us talk about the Holy Spirit, okay? Question, when does the Holy Spirit indwell us? Hmm? When? When does God the Holy Spirit indwell or get inside of us? The answer is at salvation. Okay? What about our old sin nature? When does it get inside of us? Or when is it imputed to us? When? At birth. Okay? Now, follow me very, very well on this. Now, if this is a basketball game, like the uh, Warriors against the uh, Lakers or Bulls or Lakers, like uh, all of this, against any other teams. Who is leading by half shot? Who is leading by half shot in our life? Is it the old nature or the Holy Spirit? Who do you think is leading? Hmm? Answer me. Naturally, it is the old teenager who is leading by half shot. Do you know why? Because from the very moment we first came to our senses, or from the time we were born physically, it was already our old nature which was in control of our life. Right? Now, do you get the point? That there are some of us who got saved when we were a little older, or are old already. Some of us will say, I wish I got saved at an early age, because I can already sense the effects or the results of the Holy Spirit beginning to move in my life. <clears throat> but <clears throat> there are some who have not experienced it yet, since they are still new, or they just got saved. Now, therefore, we can see here that this salvation we call it as being born again, according to the Word of God, okay? So that right at the moment that you are born again, the Holy Spirit starts to enable or indwell your body. Now, we can see here now that through this process, it is salvation that enables us this thing, right? That is the reason why there are people who cannot accept it, who reject salvation. Because their old nature that's inside them would kind of say, don't, don't, don't accept it. Because if you do, you will no longer be able to experience the nice things, the enjoyments of life. And because they were convinced by the dictates of their old sin nature, they used their negative volition by rejecting salvation. You see, our volition is within our soul and within our old sin nature, okay? Now, when one's volition says yes to salvation, then the Holy Spirit immediately indwells him. So when the Holy Spirit indwells us in our life, now this is very interesting because according to what it says here, please allow me to read it, uh, Romans 8, 12. After we have received Christ as Lord and Savior, after we have received the Holy Spirit, we therefore have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. Verse 13, for if you live according to the sinful nature, you will what? You will die. 
But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Very interesting. That is really very interesting, right? Now continue. In verse 14, it says, Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Now here it is. This is getting clearer. In other words, if you are not led by the Holy Spirit, does this mean you are not a child of God? Answer me. What does this mean then? If you are not led by the Spirit, you are not a child of God. First of all, what do we mean by being led? Hmm? What does it mean by being led? If you are being led by the Holy Spirit, what does that mean? If you are led, by the way, what are the two things that the Holy Spirit can do to you? Number one is what? Control. Number two, filling. Okay? Now, if the Word of God says, particularly in this verse, that those who are led, the word led here refers to which of the two functions of the Holy Spirit? Control or filling? Which of the two? Control or filling? When you are led by the Holy Spirit, are you filled or controlled? Okay? Well, there are some of you who are rather confused or surprised. What does control of the Holy Spirit mean? Hmm? When you are filled by the Holy Spirit, listen, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, what does it mean? Now, please take note that control and filling <clears throat> of the Holy Spirit are one and the same. If you are filled, you are controlled. Okay? Now, when the Word of God says, you are led by the Holy Spirit, what does this mean? What does this mean? Are you indwelt? Or filled because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God so what does being led mean indwelt or filled the answer it is both indwelt and filled <clears throat> now you may say in other words if we are not filled but indwelt only then we cannot be sons of God well, the word led here, led by the Holy Spirit, by the way, can you be led if the Holy Spirit does not dwell in you? No, you cannot, correct? Another question, can you be led by the Holy Spirit if you are not filled by the Holy Spirit? What is that led by? Huh? If I lead you, what does that mean? Now, let's put aside doctrine first. In the human realm, what does being led by means? For instance, if I am going to lead you, you stand up. What does that mean? Now, you are still confused, I know. Okay. I know you did not really get me. Let's put it this way, okay? If I lead you by telling you, stand up. Should everybody need to stand up? That's a very good question. Answer, should everybody need to stand up? That's it. You may or may not, correct? In other words, volition is again involved. Yes, I can lead you by telling you to stand up, but some would not take heed or would not mind my leading, right? No matter how loud I shout to lead you to stand up, some would say, so what if I do not? <laughs> you see? So those who don't follow my leading to stand up won't stand up, right? Do you get the point here? <clears throat> In other words, if I'm going to lead you, does that actually mean that I am able to control you? Hmm? That does not mean, that does not mean I am able to control you, right? 
And we can see here that when the Holy Spirit is leading us, that does not mean that we are controlled, but we are indwelt because we can hear His leading. But again, it all depends upon our volition, whether we follow His leading or not. You see the point now? That is why if the Holy Spirit is not dwelling in you, you are certainly not a child of God. Never. Now, did you get the point now? However, if you are being led by the Holy Spirit, even if you do not follow His leading, you are still a child of God. You see? That is what this particular verse is trying to show us. But if you don't follow, that's another story, right? You know that already. And tomorrow we're going to take up verse 15 of Romans 8. So don't forget to stick around and uh, continue to follow our uh, discussion on this. Okay? This time, let us pray. <clears throat> Father, we're grateful to you for the privilege of assembly worship and hence having the privilege of having fellowship with you and your word, which lives and remains forever. We thank you, Father, that your word is forever a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Because the entrance of your word giveth life, it giveth understanding to the simple. Thank you for this opportunity, this Bible study through the YouTube. All these we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Manavan. <clears throat>